What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Ooh. So today we are doing one of the most requested installs I've seen in the comment section. We are doing the Get a Dom Tune Cylinder 4 Cooling Mod. We're doing the donger. We're doing the donger. We're putting it in the car. So what this does is it, uh, it reroutes coolant from the heater core hose. I don't remember which one off the top of my head. It's on the instructions. Uh, but it reroutes that coolant using negative vacuum pressure going into the cylinder four. Uh, it's pretty easy to install to be honest. There are some supplementary things that you're going to need to get if you don't already have that, but we'll go over that in a second, as well as some tools that you might not have laying around. But overall, I don't expect this install to be extremely difficult. It should be straightforward to the point. Um, it's going to be a little tedious though because I hate dealing with coolant because it just smells bad, it gets on everything, it burns when you drive the car, or just the residual coolant everywhere, and it's just, I'm not a fan of it. So anyways, we're gonna go over what comes with the kit, what tools you're gonna need, what supplementary items you're gonna need, and then we're gonna start installing this. So, what actually comes with the kit? So, with this Get a Dom Tune Cylinder 4 Cooling Kit, Dom sent some instructions, which is very nice. These are gonna be very helpful when going through here. You get the actual um, cooling mod, I guess you could call it. It's just a hose with a fitting on it. Um, Super easy to do, shouldn't be bad. Uh, we have the metal T-fitting. These do come with metal T-fittings. I know some people out there, I've seen on Rally Sport Direct's comments, uh, were concerned that some of them came with plastic. This one does come with metal, which is nice. You get three hose clamps for the T-fitting, um, which shouldn't be bad at all. These are gonna be for the heater core hoses, as well as the uh, dong right here. Now, tool-wise, you're gonna need, uh, these are some of the specialty things I had to get. I needed a one-inch uh, spanner. This is the only one I could find local to me. Uh, you're also gonna need, I had to go pick this up, it was a 12 millimeter hex key. You could use an Allen key, but um, I'm gonna tell you now that thing's gonna be on there really tight, so you're not gonna be able to get it off with an Allen key. Uh, I also have a quarter inch ratchet with a seven millimeter socket and a couple extensions and a wobbly do to be able to tighten these guys down once we get it on. Uh, some needle nose pliers because we are gonna drain some coolant off of the oil cooler to get all the oil out of the uh, channels in the engine. Some of the other stuff, like I said, you never need these, but I do highly recommend them. I'll link them below. I bought them off Amazon if you want a pair. I think I paid 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks for this set, which has saved my life multiple times and not being drenched in coolant. And it's gonna do that again today. You're gonna need a box cutter or something to cut some line with. I had one coming from Amazon today, but they haven't shown up yet. And I wanna get this video out there. So we're gonna do it without it. Uh, some acetone, you're gonna need some acetone or some sort of solvent to be able to clean off the uh, the old threads to get some of that old sealant off so that way you have a good just a good seal with this new one once we get it on you're also gonna need some coolant we're draining coolant i have two gallons of the subaru uh long lasting blue coolant if you if you plan on reusing your current coolant in the car you can but uh, i'd rather run just new coolant uh also don't need them i want them rubber gloves i hate coolant i hate dealing with fluids in cars because it just gets everywhere and then lastly uh just some just some Craftsman gloves. I've cut my hand, had to get stitches too many times. So uh, I don't play around with sharp objects. But with that, that's kind of everything here on the table. Um, the last thing that we're gonna touch on is this Permatex, the right stuff. Literally says the right stuff right on there. This is the Permatex uh, gray one minute gasket maker. This is what Dom calls out in the instructions. Uh, exactly. I'll link this down below. I think I got this on Amazon also for eight bucks. I think I don't remember, but this is what we're going to be using to be able to uh, seal up that new guy. So the cure time on that's going to end up being 12 to 24 hours, I believe. Uh, I'm not hundred percent sure. So we're not going to be able to burp the cooling system until tomorrow. So this is going to be a two part video. So with that, uh, we're just gonna go over this. We're gonna start draining coolant off of the oil cooler in the car to clear out those channels in the engine so that way we don't get drenched with coolant. Ooh. Alrighty, so just like last weekend, I'm gonna end up having to drain the coolant off the oil cooler like we just talked about to get all the coolant out of the channels in the engine. Uh, after I get it drained, I'm gonna bring the camera up and I'll show you guys what coolant line I'm talking about. But since coolant's gonna be going everywhere, I don't wanna get the camera covered in coolant, obviously, so I'm just gonna, just gonna do it. I'm not gonna lie, that was a lot of coolant. So as you can see right there, that's the coolant line that we pulled off the oil cooler. I'm gonna let it finish draining, get that line back on, and then we'll go for the galley plug that is in the rear of the car to uh, to get this going. Just to give you guys an idea how much coolant came out, filled up a good amount. It's a little over a gallon of coolant that's in there. So I'm not gonna end up reusing this. I'm gonna dispose of this at a local auto parts store, uh, see if they'll take it. If not, I'll find the proper way to dispose of it. But be kind to the environment, guys. Don't throw your coolant in the dirt. So with that, now we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna show you guys where that plug location is, and then I'm gonna start pulling that plug out. All right, 
We got the plug out. It was a real pain in the So what I ended up using, I used two of these, uh, I think they're two inch extensions. Two of these, what the hell, confetti's up there, wow. Two of these two inch extensions, the uh, 12 millimeter hex key. I started it with a breaker bar so that way I could get a little more uh, leverage and length on it. And then once I broke it loose, I swapped over to the half inch ratchet and got it out. Um, so this guy is out and free. Now the one thing that concerns me is getting that new plug tight. Um, not quite sure how I'm gonna do that because there's not a lot of room in there. So, but we'll figure it out as we always do. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab some of that acetone, get it put on a rag, uh, get my finger up in there and start cleaning out some of those threads to get some of this old uh, schmoo off of here. Okay, so just using some normal acetone I got at the store. Uh, this little rag here guy, I'm just gonna get the rag wet with acetone, uh, get it up there with my finger, get those threads cleaned out, let it dissolve a little bit and then uh, let it dry. Once it dries, we'll uh, start getting this new one put in. All right, got it cleaned out. There's a uh, there's some of that red sealant on the rag, so it is a it is a good idea to actually clean that out. I would not bypass this step if you were doing this at home. Do it right the first time. Don't leak coolant out of your cylinder four cooling mod, guys. So with that, I'm gonna let that dry for a couple minutes. Um, just let it really uh, sit in there. Wipe it down one more time, and then uh, whew, this is a tiring position. And then we'll uh, get the new. Cylinder 4 cooling mod thread cleaned up and put some of that Permatex on there. Get it threaded in, get it tightened down. Now remember the block is aluminum so you don't want to over tighten that thing when we're getting it in. So with that, um, we're just going to get it uh, good and tight. Uh, Dom doesn't give a torque spec on his paperwork either. He just says get it good and tight, but uh, not too tight because it is an aluminum block. Now with that, um, it shouldn't be bad. I think the hardest part's done is just getting that plug out. Actually, I lied. I think the hardest part is going to be getting the new plug tight. That one inch giant doodad I have is gonna be difficult to get in there, but we'll figure it out. Here we are, ready to put this guy in. So now with this plug, I'm a little nervous because this is the only one inch wrench that I have and this thing is massive. This thing is huge. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit this, but as a backup, I have the uh, handy dandy wrench of all sizes. Who doesn't like that? So with that, um, we're gonna go ahead and get it sealed up. I'm gonna get it put in the car. This is that good Permatex stuff that uh, Dom recommends. I'm gonna get this in. I'm gonna get a little bit on these threads here. This is gonna act as a uh, Loctite and as a sealant, so that way it's not gonna leak out of there. I'm gonna get it on. I'm gonna get it in there, tighten it down, and then I'm gonna try really hard to get this camera up in there so you guys can see where it is I'm talking about, but it's very, very cramped space. Not gonna lie. That was much easier to tighten than I thought. Hey, Amazon dropped off the goods. This will make this job even easier. Hose cutters. I was really expecting to have to do this by hand with a, with a box cutter. Thank you, Amazon, for showing up right on time. I feel like I need to, oh my God, look at that. That's gonna make things a lot easier. So I'm gonna let that sealant cure a little bit before I start messing with it too much. Uh, so I'm gonna let it sit for about five, 10 minutes, and then we're gonna go ahead and start uh, Cutting into the return, return? I don't remember if it's the return or the other one for the uh, heater core line, but we will read the instructions, figure out which line it is, get it cut. Ready. next up I gotta go down there, I gotta cut that heater core return hose line. It is the one that goes into the black metal pipe on the back of the block. Like I said, once we get all this installed, I'll bring the camera under so you guys can see uh, just everything that you need to do down there. We'll walk through it uh, once it's all installed. So I'm gonna run down here, I'm gonna get this guy cut and then uh, get it put in, get the T-fittings put in and then I'll bring the camera up somehow and uh, we'll check it out. Now, this is not easy to get this camera right here, but right there, the hose right in the middle of the screen you can see is the cylinder four cooling mod. Now, this is, I'm gonna be honest, this is the best angle I can get you guys because there's an axle right in my way and then there's suspension in my way. But uh, right there next to the steering rack, it's gonna run up to, Jesus Christ, that hose right there in the heater core. So it's gonna be the bottom most hose in the heater core. You're gonna wanna get the hose clamps put on there fairly tight. Now when we start the car, Dom does say that we're gonna wanna pinch that line off and uh, rev the engine a couple times. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna be able to do that yet, but we will figure it out. Um, so I'm gonna get the car back on the ground now and uh, fill it up with coolant. I'm gonna let it sit for a couple hours and then we'll come back out and burp it. 
to uh, get all the air bubbles out that we just put in. So I'm gonna get this guy going and uh, somehow crawl out of here with this massive camera. Oh boy. I guess, oh, actually right there. Oh, right there, all right, right there is the, uh, the cooling mod. I was able to get it between the drive shaft and the frame. So to the right of that, uh, that plug right there, it's gonna go into the block. So it's literally right to the right of it. So the plug location is right there. Then on the other side of the axle, it runs up to those lines up there. Very difficult to be able to get on camera, but at least I was able to show you guys where it's at. So I'm gonna crawl out from under here, get the car back on the ground and uh, get the bumper back on. So whenever it comes to filling your cooling system in these cars, you always wanna go from the upper coolant reservoir as this is the highest point in the car. Um, so we need to get coolant back into the engine as we uh, drained it all out of the oil cooler. So we're gonna go ahead, put some OEM Subaru Blue coolant in here. Um, then we're gonna let the car sit for a couple hours. And then after that, we're gonna burp it. So we're just gonna get some coolant in it now, let it sit and then we'll end up coming back. All right, so now it's time that we need to burp the coolant system. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna get in the car. You guys are not gonna be able to hear anything I say once the car is on, uh, just because it reverbs so bad in here and it's so loud. So I'm gonna walk you through it now. So um, we're gonna turn the car on. We're going to turn the heat all the way up, max, max heat. And then we're going to take off the cap on the upper turbo coolant reservoir. That's gonna let any of those air bubbles out. Now we need to monitor this because sometimes it does bubble out and over. So if it does get ready to catch it with a rag or you can have a rag just laid around it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a, a small rag just laid around the upper turbo coolant reservoir opening. Then I'm gonna have a second one to catch any residual coolant. Uh, now be careful to not burn yourself because the coolant will get hot. Uh, what we need is the thermostat to open up to let all that coolant flow into the, the passages of the engine. So I massaged out as many of the air bubbles as I could um, on the upper and lower coolant uh, radiator hoses. So it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, this is probably going to take me about 20 to 30 minutes to get all of the air bubbles out. But once we do that, uh, we'll follow up and we'll see if we're good to go. Alrighty, our thermostat just opened up, which means we're getting a lot of those bigger bubbles coming up now, which is what we want. Remember to keep monitoring your coolant temp. Right now we're at 183. All right, just to show you guys, this is where you're gonna be bleeding it from. So the bubbles are gonna be coming up and out of there, just like that. So you're gonna wanna get all those bubbles out, uh, to wrap a rag around it, kind of like this. So I'm gonna get this guy put back on the tripod. I'm gonna keep monitoring this and uh, our coolant temp. So right now our coolant temp is sitting at 185. Uh, you can't really see it because I don't have any light in there. But right now our coolant temp is 185. So make sure you have that pulled up on the access port so that way you can monitor what just what uh the temperature of the car is doing you really don't want it to overheat you would not have a good day oh. you're gonna want to rev your car a couple times to get the air bubbles and the heater core hoses out and push all that coolant through so it is going to take a little bit for your hot air to get hot again in the car uh, but once you get all those air bubbles out you're good to go All right, so I just wrapped up uh, burping the cooling system in total. It took me about 45 minutes to get all those air bubbles out. Um, now, like I just said, make sure you're revving up the car a little bit. You are gonna have some coolant that overflows out of that upper coolant reservoir. Totally fine. Just make sure you have a rag or something around it, kind of like how, how I showed you guys to catch that coolant. But overall, that was a really easy install. That was extremely easy and any, literally any of you guys can do this at home. I'll link below all the special tools that I used um, to be able to get this done just because they're not all readily available tools. Uh, but overall, huge success. Uh, big shout out to uh, Dominic, uh, the creator of this uh, Cylinder 4 cooling mod. He was the original, I believe, to, uh, to design it and implement it. It works fantastic. It did take about 10, no, it probably took about 20 to 30 minutes to get my heat back in the car. There was an air bubble stuck uh, somewhere in the heater hose line. So make sure that you are revving that engine a little bit with that cap off to get those air bubbles out. But overall, huge success. Um, the car didn't go above 190 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for the coolant. 
which is good. Very good. Um, there wasn't any airflow going through the radiator or anything, so I wouldn't expect any lower temps on that, but we didn't exceed 190, which is exactly what we wanted. Ooh, I'm excited. You guys were asking for this video for a while. I know I couldn't, I really, it was so hard to even get the camera up in there for what I did get of uh, the backside of the head. Um, but I do hope this video does help you guys in getting this installed on your cars. If you guys have any questions about what I did going through this, please drop them below in the comments. If you have any suggestions for anyone else who might be doing this in the future, go ahead. Ah, ah, drop it below in the comments as well. And as always, I appreciate all the time that you guys spend here on the channel with me. Ooh. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that little thumbs up, turn that little thumbs up blue. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. And if you would, please consider subscribing to the page. Ooh. We're gonna do that up here in this corner today, today. Uh, uh. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!